And obviously, sport, it, sport is the world's greatest common denominator, okay? I've got the story. It's in a, it's, I've made this up, but it probably happened somewhere, okay? <laughs> Where Jimmy, who's 19, just finishes um, his, uh, his uh, stint at McDonald's and goes next door to the pub because he's a massive Anthony Joshua boxing fan, and it's on that night, Saturday night, in the pub. And he's on £12 an hour, whatever, and he sits at a bar stool because it's on the TV and buys a bottle of Budweiser. Charles, the 55-year-old uh, owner of his own company, is driving in his extremely nice car, but he's a massive boxing fan. And he sees on a big screen in this pub that it's on. So he pulls over, walks into the pub, and the only available seat is this stall next to Jimmy. I've made this story up, sure. but it happens somewhere. Sure. And he orders a <clears throat> Hendrix and Fever Tree. Uh, <laughs> and they're both watching uh, the Joshua fight. Joshua knocks the guy out, and they're both hugging each other. What else would bring Charles and Jimmy together to do that? Nothing. Maybe music to a degree, Maybe. but not as much as sport. sport. So sport is the world's greatest common denominator. And I felt there was this massive niche to bring mm. people together uh, under the banner of sport. But it's, it's really a business club. And so I, I, I went to a, a place in, in Mayfair, which is now defunct. A lot of the clubs and members clubs got it wrong. They all smoked their job done cigar in 2000. And didn't realise that over the preceding 20 years, you know, diversity's become a much bigger issue and a long way to go. Speaking as a ginger-haired person, a <laughs> uh, long way to go, but it's getting there. You've you know? got some. And, and life is, you know, and we now live in a world where you get 26-year-old CEOs of tech companies. Yes. And they certainly don't want to be in an old club, etc. So they stood still. I said to them, look, I want to launch my own club. I want to live here. You're going to let me because I'm going to create lots of business for you. I got lots, all, all, the, all of my members will, will, will be spending money here. And I began it by doing events because the one thing I could do is dip into my very, very deep black book. And I started producing loads of great stars. Uh, and the first one was Eddie Jones, funnily enough, who'd just become the England coach. This is 2017. The second one was Sir Steve Redgrave. And if you want to know why I use sports stars, when I interview sports stars, well, first of all, I don't like to use the word interview. I like to use the word or well, the phrase a fireside chat. Okay. Because that's what it is, like we're having now. Absolutely. Um, and so Steve Redgrave, okay, uh, my second lunch, and a member said to me, I'm not into rowing. And I said, right, okay, let me just, <laughs> let me just explain something to you. <laughs> this guy won five Olympic gold medals in 20 years, okay, uh, one of the most grueling sports imaginable. He was 40 when he won his last one, and he earned next to nothing for doing it. And the guy said, yeah, yeah, I know that's really good, but it's still a bit, still rowing. And I said, no, I'm not finished. And for the last 15 years of those 20 years, he had colitis, Crohn's disease, and type A diabetes, three of the most debilitating conditions you could possibly have. So what does that tell you? Wow. I will tell you what it tells you. <laughs> Number one, he's a serial winner. Yeah. Number two, he's built up a no excuses environment. Because no CEO wants to know why you haven't done it. Yeah. Not interested. No. And number three, whatever's thrown at him, he found a way. So, my friend, are you telling me this is about rowing? Because I'm telling you this is about life. Yeah. And all the top sports stars I've ever known, yes, it's a given they have a skill set. They can hit a ball with a bat or with a racket or with their foot. They're very good at that. But there's many people very good at that. It is all, all about this and their mindset. And these are the same qualities that we all need. We all need. When we fail, when we're on the floor, do we stay down there or do we get up? Like, and, and that's why, that's, so the guy went, oh, I see. He came along to, the, to Redgrave lunch with three clients, came up to me after and said, that's the most inspirational day I've ever had in my life. And I went, <laughs> I rest my case. So I used the sports stars. And then it grew, the club grew, more members, you know, we're not an events company. We're a club. We have members from across the whole business community because everybody's in the sport. If it's a niche, it's the world's biggest niche by a mile. <laughs> and then we, we, we moved into a second club in London, then a third club, then I moved to Manchester. And all, everything was ticking along very, very nicely. And it's basically members have use of all these venues uh, to hang out in, to work, to, to meet friends, to meet colleagues, to meet fellow members. Um, uh, and then we also have all these events, which, again, are 
great fun anyway, but also great client entertainment opportunities and also fantastic uh, business development opportunities. You know, we, I'm a massive believer in, in order to build great business, you first build great relationships. So that's kind of old school, but it's, that will never change. No. I know what I really love about our events is because I host them. <clears throat> and um, not because it's an ego thing. It's, it's the only thing I'm actually half good at is, <laughs> is, is, is hosting. And I'm cheap. Um, uh, I love it at the end where it finishes officially and then the afters go on. And I, I uh, so for example, a lunch finishes at four o'clock and, si- and it's 120 people in the room. We try and, lo- try and make it reasonably intimate. At six o'clock, there's still 70 people there. At eight o'clock, there's still 40 people there. And at t- 10 o'clock, it's a somewhat bedraggled uh, 20 people there. And you know what? None of them knew each other before wow. they joined the club. And nice. I look back and they're shaking hands, they're laughing, they're backslapping, they're buying drinks, they're saying, oh, can I introduce you to somebody? And you did that. And what happens then is that somebody might say, oh, I do this. Uh, and then you say, right, great. Do you know what? Let's have a coffee next week and we can talk about it. Right. What are you having? Gin and tonic or something? And there's no sort of people going around handing out business cards like confetti. It's not one of those speed networking businessy things, which you know, I think are god awful because they're not real. Sure. And, and you get to know people. We have our, my business mantra is for the club and for me actually: good people, good business, good fun. And I think all those three things are very, very important. Then COVID happened. You know, not great. Not great for a guy who um, was running a business that had venues that were closed and events that were that didn't happen. Not great. And by the way, it's the first business I've ever run. I've only really been a grown up for about four and a half years. Okay, before grown up meaning you had your own business. No, no, as in a grown up, (laughs) as in as in an adult, (laughs) as in an adult. Um, And then we had uh, COVID, and you know, I I look. I think perspective is a massive thing in in life. It's it's if you use perspective, you're going to be okay. So you know, COVID was was tough. We lost a lot of members. We we were really on a roll, and then somebody burst our balloon. Well, COVID burst our balloon, um, and uh, but I just decided, well, you know, don't be fake about it, but be positive and and still use the time to make things happen. It gave me a chance just to slow down and to have a look at what was working, what wasn't working, where I was spending money well, where I wasn't spending money well, which is quite a lot, um, <laughs> and was able to tighten it up, get a better structure, um, and make it and make it work a, a lot better. Plus the fact it could have been worse. You know, who, who, who am I to complain? With the life that I've had and the fun I've had, I've got no grounds to complain about anything. You know, my cousin, God bless her, uh, was diagnosed with motor neuron. On the day that lockdown was placed, she couldn't even go out. It took her 15 months to pass away. So honestly, you know, if you, if you put it right down to that level, we've got no no right to complain about about anything. Um, and then obviously, you know, with with even last year with with the COVID hangover, uh, the war in Ukraine. Again, not complaining. Could be worse. We, you know, we could be in Dnipro now or or, sure. or Kiev, whatever. So yes. it's all relative, but obviously not good. For the business, sure. the cost of living crisis, the energy crisis, the Liz Trust <laughs> asterisk show of a government and that mini budget, and then the and then the strikes at the end, all, all of which are challenging. But it is what it is. Sure. You've just got to get get on with it. Um, and so right now we're we're just beginning to get a, get on a roll again. Uh, we're we're known for our events. So last year we did um, Dan Carter lunch, a Colin Montgomery lunch. Uh, Damon Hill lunch, a Sir Jeff Hurst lunch, uh, John Daly lunch, not for the faint-hearted, that one. We did six Sugar Ray Leonard dinners all over the country, which was great. For, I mean, again, I'm on stage. I'm, I've got the best seat in the house. Yeah. You know, Amazing. it's not a job, is it? No. Um, uh, interviewing Ray, who I know quite well, superstar. You know, we've got uh, so many fun things lined up this year. We have our great uh, end-of-year awards dinner we have every year. We had Boney M featuring in December, doing all their hits, and Lord Sebco and Johnny Bairstow and Dame Lord uh, Kenny. We had Klitschko, uh, Vladimir Klitschko on stage from the bunker in in wow. Kiev, all appearing at our awards dinner. So we have a lot of fun. Uh, but around it, all our members use all our clubs. We now, you know, five in London, Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds. Durham, 10 and, venues, six and, cities. And just so our listeners and viewers out there, to understand, yep. you've partnered with 
hotels and business venues that they can go and or, work or, in or, or, or meet or, in. Or, or members clubs as well. It, it's a bit of everything. Uh, we're at Birmingham, we're at Edgebaston Stadium, which is the cricket ground, but we've got our own business Brilliant. lounge there, overlooking the cricket. Um, in uh, Manchester, Liverpool and Leeds, we're in these amazing uh, members lounges, which only us and the, and the company's VIP clients can use. They're beautiful. Durham, it's like Edgebaston, it's overlooking the cricket ground. Yeah. London, uh, we're at uh, M in the city and Canary Wharf in Victoria, Lescargo. Yeah. So, and they've all got members' lounges here. And so we, we live in all of them. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs>